All right, Larry Kruger here with the, your Pig in a Pickle Krug Show video. Today we're talking about the San Francisco Giants and three hitters to keep your eye on this spring in Giants camp. We're going to start with Izon Diaz. Izon Diaz is from the from Puerto Rico. He's a left-handed hitter. He throws throws right, hits left, and he's a sturdy kid. He's 5'11", about 200 pounds. He can play multiple spots, but he's really a second baseman. And he's 26. He's got raw power and a smooth swing, a very compact swing. Um, interesting kid. He was born in Puerto Rico. Um, and then he moved to Springfield, Massachusetts at the age of four and went to high school in Springfield, Mass. Um, and then was drafted, drafted in 2014 um, in the second round. And, you know, basically decided he was going to pass up a full ride. He had a full full scholarship to Vandy, passed that up, drafted out of uh, out of high school. And um, and then, you know, in 2022, he, had, he played on three different levels. He had 87 games total, 296 at bats in the three levels and hit 23 home runs, 61 RBIs, 264 average, 367 on base. So he made his major league debut with the uh, Marlins. Um, and, you know, he's it's he's an interesting guy. He was drafted by the Arizona Diamondbacks in the second round in 2019. Then he got traded by the Diamondbacks to the Brewers in a deal in 2016 for Gene Segura. So now he's on the Brewers. Then he gets traded in by the Brewers to the Marlins in the Christian Yelich in the Christian Yelich deal in 2018. And then the Giants traded for him um, last year at the beginning of the year for cash. Um, his father, Raul, played played college baseball. What I love, though, about Diaz is he's a real hitter. I mean, you're talking about a, a, a guy who has a perfect, perfect offensive game uh, to succeed at Oracle Park. He's a gap hitter. He's got a smooth, compact stroke. And he's got great raw power. So... I mean, I think this is a guy who could show power at second base if the Giants want to promote him and play him on a regular basis at second base. I think that's going to be fun to watch. I think there's a very good chance the Giants look to him to play some second base with, you know, trying to get younger, trying to get more athletic in the middle of the diamond. I think Tyro Estrada may wind up sharing shortstop to some degree with Brandon Crawford, and that would create an opening for Izon Diaz. So, He's, he's a guy who definitely, um, you know, if you look at him at the plate, he looks a lot like Colton Wong, the former Cardinal and Brewer hitter. He's got a little bit of an open stance. He's got a real solid base. And he's got great hand strength, great hand quickness. And he can pepper that 420 gap. So I like his offensive potential. I saw him last year in a couple games for the Sacramento River Cats. And you're talking about a guy who hits the ball with power. He's got great hand strength, great wrist strength. And I think for the Giants might be an underrated offensive player who can step in and, and play a little second base. Now he can play short in a pinch, but he's not ideal. He can play third in a pinch, not ideal. Probably could throw him in the outfield if you wanted to, but that's not ideal. But I think his best spot clearly is second base. And he's got the ability to hit extra bases, um, you know, and, and he's, you know, last year he had a 367 on base. That's a great number. So I, I'm looking for this guy to kind of bust out this year. Um, it's always about opportunity. You need talent. He's got talent. Uh, what what he needs now is an opportunity. So remember that name, Izon Diaz. That's player number one. Player number two that I think you got to remember if you're in Giants camp is Blake Sable. Blake Sable is a Rule 5 catcher uh, who's really a strong left-handed hitter. He's 6'4", he's 225 pounds. He played AAA last year for the Pirates. He's 25. Pirates drafted him in the seventh round in the 2019 draft. He went to SC where he was an outfielder and a catcher. And then last year in 123 games in the minors, 447 at-bats, he had 26 doubles, 19 home runs, a total of 51 extra base hits, 75 RBIs, hit 284, and maybe his best stat was a 363 on base percentage. Um, if you look at Sable, this guy's an offensive player. 
He's an outstanding offensive player, potentially. He has a 372 career on base percentage in the minor leagues. Giants traded for him. Um, he was taken by Cincy in the Rule 5 draft, and the Giants traded for him. So he essentially is on the Giants roster with the exact same Rule 5 provisions as would exist if the Giants drafted him. So what does that mean? That means if the Giants keep him on the major league roster all year, he's theirs. If by chance they want to send him to the minor leagues, they have to offer him back to the Reds, and the Reds can pay a nominal amount of money and reacquire Blake Sable. So I actually think he's going to be the one, the Giants' backup catcher. I think the Giants are going to pass up on Joey Bart, send him back to the minors for more seasoning, or possibly trade Joey Bart. It's my belief as we sit here on the 26th of February that Austin wins will be the number one catcher for the Giants and that Blake Sable will be the number two catcher. Now, his arm is just fringe. It's a fringy type arm. He has just okay arm strength. Um, he's he's not really a strong major league catcher. He's much more of an offensive player. Interestingly enough, uh, Blake Sable is a second cousin of the Steelers Hall of Fame safety, Troy Palomalu, and who also went to USC. Um, I think the one thing that we've seen in the last couple of years, you say, why is Sable now starting to emerge after you know a number of years in the minor leagues? He His swing now uses his lower half a little bit more. And so I think he's a little bit more polished offensively overall. And I think he's you know a, a guy who might be able to give this offense a little bit of a jolt. So I'm predicting that Sable you know, stays with the Giants, makes the club out of spring. Austin wins as your starting catcher. Sable winds up being your your, lef your left-handed pinch hitter off the bench, backup catcher. Maybe he plays once or twice a week, but I think the Giants definitely like his offensive potential and remember that name, Blake Sable. Now, the third guy is a guy that you guys all know, and that's Steven Piscotti who's in the Giants camp as a non-roster invitee. And I really think that there's there's more there for Piscotti. Piscotti's a 6'4", 215-pound right-handed hitter who's now 32, um, Bay Area guy, born in Pleasanton, went to Amador Valley High School, drafted in 2012 by the Cardinals out of Stanford, um, and then was traded to the A's in 2017. Um, and, and wind up actually signing a six-year, $33.5 million contract with the Cardinals in 2017. And then they traded him to the A's. He, he made his Major League debut in 2015, and he really started off well. He actually had his first four-hit game uh, against the Giants at Oracle Park in 2015. It's tragically, Stephen, you know, part of the reason John Mosellock and Billy Bean consummated the deal to send uh, Piscotti from St. Louis to Oakland was that his mother, Gretchen, was battling ALS. Um, sadly, she died um, in May of 2018 from ALS. And if you remember the story, Piscotti homered in his very first at-bat back and showed great courageousness in, in dealing with, obviously, what had to have been just an awful tragedy for him and his family. Um, I think the interesting thing is all mixed in here between his move from the Cardinals to the A's. He had a really good first year with the A's, but Piscotti had a wrist surgery in 2021. I think that has contributed to some of the problems he has. He's got a small, he's got a, a, a short, compact right-handed swing and good gap power. Um, I actually think he could be ideally suited to playing at Oracle Park. I really do. Uh, he's living in Danville right now with his wife and son, and he's, you know, he's in comfortable surroundings um, and, you know, now switching leagues back in the National League. If he makes the roster, he makes one million dollars. Um, and I, I think there's a very good chance that Stephen Piscotti either makes the roster out of spring training or potentially makes the roster sometime during the first half of the year. Now, what do I like about Piscotti? I think in a lot of ways, he's ideally suited to play at Oracle Park. He's got right-handed power. He can hit it out from center field to the left field line. I think it's, I think left field, especially straightaway left at Oracle Park, is a very live yard. And, um, and I think he can take advantage of it. I also think switching leagues 
will help him. There are some differences, despite the fact that, you know, the DH is in both leagues now. There are some slight, there are some differences in the way AL pitchers go about attacking hitters compared to NL pitchers. And I think he's going to see more hard stuff. And I, I, I think he's recovered from that wrist sin- surgery. Um, I think he could have a nice bounce back year. He's not old. I mean, we're not talking about 35 year old player at the very end. He's 32. He could easily have two or three more decent years. The other reason I really like the fit for the Giants is look at the Giants outfield. It's an almost an entirely left-handed hitting outfield. The only right-handed bats they now have in the outfield are Mitch Hanniger, Austin Slater, and Elliot Ramos. So Piscotty's a right-handed bat and um, a veteran right-handed bat at that. So I think he's going to have a good spring and come north. Um, if he doesn't break north with the with the team, he's going to go to Sacramento and start his year there. But I think you're going to see Stephen Piscotty in a Giants uniform. And do not be shocked if Stephen Piscotty kind of finds himself in a Giants uniform. So just remember those three bats as you're if you're down in Scottsdale, if you're watching the Giants on the TV uh, during the Cactus League, Blake Sable, Izon Diaz, Stephen Piscotty, three names that you should keep an eye on if you're following the Giants and what they do in the Cactus League. All right, that does it for our Pig in a Pickle uh, video. Hope you enjoyed it. The Krug Show pick brought to you by Pig in a Pickle, and we'll have more videos in the days ahead. Thank you for uh, supporting the Krug Show.